The Power BI service has a built-in usage report. This needs to be set up for each workspace and it can record information for the last 90 days. It is fairly limited in terms of its customization and the limitation of only being able to look at one workspace at a time can be an issue, of course, if you're managing a number of workspaces across your organization. Alternatively, the Power BI API is very powerful, but does require quite a considerable degree of coding to get to work as intended. The third alternative is the Altis Power BI Insight Usage Report. And here we're looking at an example with anonymized data. And we're presented initially with an overview where we can see how all our workspaces dashboards, reports, and users. And we're calling out here in red, the inactive objects and users. And just summarizing here, the top five uh, objects and users across our organization, across all of our workspaces within the tenant. This data is not limited to the last 90 days. It's being refreshed and stored in an Azure Cosmos DB. And we can configure the database to include information from within the organization that's not held within Azure. So, for example, here we're looking at an organization which is split by divisions, regions, countries, and we've also included job roles. And this is completely customizable. So, for example, for a university, this could be departments and faculties um, rather than regions and countries. We can also use this report to maintain our Power BI tenant. So if I click on here, we can have a look immediately at all the workspaces, dashboards, reports, and the users that are, that are, not be, that are inactive. So we may want to remove these work, these objects that are not being used and contact users that are not, not interacting with the Power BI service. Um, and particularly important, perhaps if they've got Power BI Pro licenses and they're not using them, it could be costing us money in the organization. We've then got some splits based on workspaces, dashboards and reports. These are the same, all the same format. If we look at the report one, we can again list and get in a little bit more detail, understand the activity counts, activities per users, and when they were last accessed. And here, as an example, we're also looking at our data sets and data sources to see which data sources are being used by all our data sets, when they're most frequently being updated. And we can also see activity. So we can see here views uh, of dashboards and reports and updates, deletes, and so on. And we can also see here um, who's publishing an apps, when, when they were last published and how many have been published. And taking a deeper dive into users, again, we can see here all our users and their activities. We could, for example, of course, sort them, see the, the days since users last accessed um, Power BI or by activities. And again, we've got the splits with top five workspaces, dashboards, and reports here as well. But again, this is highly customizable. So I hope you can see here that this, this report offers a huge amount of flexibility and is very powerful as a tool to both drive and monitor adoption of Power BI through the organization and in terms of maintenance as well uh, of the Power BI tenant. If you'd like to hear, learn more, uh, please get in touch. I would be happy to talk to you about your requirements.